Hello there, you're watching Lunchtime News. We're coming to you live from the News First studio here in Colombo. I'm Stephanie Lazarus. Before we head into the stories in detail, here's a look at the headlines for this afternoon. Yoshita Rajapaksa appears before the FCID. Doctor strike in five districts causes distress among patients. CB employees trade union action continues. At least 24 students and teachers killed in fire at religious school in Malaysia's capital Kuala Lumpur. And that's coming up on International News. Just as it was mentioned on the headlines, Yoshita Rajapaksa arrived at the Police Financial Crimes Investigations Division this morning in order to provide a statement. Yoshita arrived at the police FCID after the FCID informed him to appear before the division. Moving on to more local news, the Colombo High Court issues notice to the Attorney General today calling on him to appear before court on the 20th of this month. Notice was issued when the bail application submitted by the council representing former presidential secretary Lalit Viratunga and former TRC director general Anusha Palpita was taken up before Colombo High Court judge Gihan Kulatunga. On the 7th of this month, Lalit Viratunga and Anusha Palpita were imprisoned after it was proven that 600 million rupees of the Telecommunications Regulatory Commission was used to purchase and distribute silk clothes during the presidential election period. The island-wide strike action launched by the Government Medical Officers Association protests in protest rather to cite him, has caused severely affected many patients. The GMOA which launched phase three of the protest is currently underway in five districts. The Government Medical Officers Association launched the protest last Tuesday together with the anti cytom movement. Phase three of the strike action has crippled work in the districts of Gaul, Anradhapura, Kurunagala Kandy and Ratnapura. <laughs> On Tuesday, the strike affected eight districts and yesterday the strike affected a further six districts. The Department of Meteorology has forecast rains in several parts of the country today as well. Yesterday, incidents of rock falls and floods were reported from several areas in the country. A tree collapsed onto a house in Udavalavatta area in Hantana due to strong winds accompanied by heavy rains. Residents in the area say that there is a massive threat of trees collapsing on their homes. A tree collapsed on the Adams Peak Road owing to heavy rains experienced throughout the day yesterday. Our correspondent said a high-intensity power line has also collapsed onto the road. <laughs> Motorists and pedestrians travelling from the Ratnapura town and Kuruvita town have been severely inconvenienced since last night. Our correspondent said that the tree was removed off the streets by 9 this morning. Several homes and shops in the Tantrimale area were damaged by gale force winds experienced yesterday. Locals in the area say that the windy conditions are causing obstructions to farming activities. The Department of Meteorology has forecast several spells of showers in the western and Sabaragamo provinces and in the Gaul and Mathura districts with cloudy skies expected in the southwestern part of the island. The department adds that showers or thunder showers will occur in the central and Uva provinces and in the Ampara and Batiklo districts after 2 p.m. Fairly heavy rainfall of about 50 millimeters are expected at some places, particularly in the Sabaragamo and western provinces and in the Gaul and Mathura districts. The Med Department forecasts fairly strong gusty winds of up to 40 to 50 kilometers per hour over the northern half of the island. On the same subject, sluice gates of the Kukule Ganga Reservoir are being opened according to the chief engineer of the reservoir. He added that one of the sluice gates were opened at 5 a.m. yesterday and 50 square meters of water is being released per second. The water flowing through turbines are being released at 100 meters square per second and he added 
that the water that is released is an indication of a minor inundation in low-lying areas. The rainfall in dry zones over the past few days was recorded at 83 millimeters. The chief engineer of the Kukulegamba Reservoir also said that inundation of water is at a minor level in comparison to previous incidents of flooding. A German national had died after drowning in the sea of Koskoda in Gaul. Police say that the German national who arrived in the country on the 31st of this month was lodged at a hotel in Indrua. The body of the foreign national was found washed ashore and the police say that the female victim may have been between the ages of 45 and 50. The body of the deceased is currently placed at the mortuary of the Alpitya General Hospital. Now moving on to a news from the political front addressing a media briefing held yesterday, Minister Mahinda Maravira addressed reports regarding members of the SLFP preparing to leave the government. We planned a future course of action for the party and we established several committees. We set up an elections committee to ensure that we win the next election. We also set up several committees including a restructuring committee, an economic committee, a propaganda committee and a committee to pick suitable candidates. The ministers that you speak of have already willingly taken up responsibilities in these committees. We have also appointed a minister, deputy minister or parliamentarian for each district but these appointed members are not from the district that they have been assigned to overlook. So I don't believe that anyone would leave. Just as it was mentioned on the headlines today, a special discussion presided over by Minister of Power and Renewable Energy Ranjit Simbala Pitya is underway over the trade union action launched by the employees of the Ceylon Electricity Board. Officials of the Ceylon Electricity Board are also taking part in the meeting which is being held at the Ministry of Power and Renewable Energy. However, trade unions have not been invited for the discussion. Several trade unions of the Ceylon Electricity Board launched a trade union action yesterday, citing several demands, including a resolve over the issue of salary anomalies. Employees at power plants and regional offices are also taking part in the strike action. General Secretary of the CEB Employees Union, Ranjan Jayalal, said that due to the trade union action, there is a delay in restoring power outages. The strike action launched at 12 noon yesterday is successful so far. At a meeting held last evening, it was decided that the strike action would continue. There has been no positive response from the ministry. Just like they delayed this matter over the past two years, it appears as if they are going to delay it even more. The ministry officials said yesterday that no matter who goes on strike, there would be an undisrupted supply of power. But we know for a fact how the ministry and the CEB officials are struggling today to restore power outages in Ratnapura, Ahaleguda, Nuralia and Yakala area. Speaking to News First, media spokesperson of the Ministry of Power and Renewable Energy, Sulakshana Jawardhana, confirmed there is a delay in restoring power outages. Yesterday, the Ceylon Electricity Board announced that all leave of its employees have been cancelled until the 20th of this month. Still in local news, residents of the Madha Mahanur Divisional Secretariat charge that they are constantly being battered by the threat of wild elephants. People living in the villages of Kandalanda, Mahaduraliyadda, Murugahamula, Southern Duraliyadda are facing life-threatening dangers as elephants encroach on their paddy fields and villages. Our correspondent said that elephants of the Victoria, Randenigala and Randhambe Reservoirs run amok in the villages nearby. The residents have been forced to spend sleepless nights in order to safeguard their fields and homes. 